This is another video in our Lego series and actually this video uses two or three of my very favourite resources in the whole world because they're just so versatile. You'll need a whiteboard and a pen and just some Lego and as you can see I've used a Lego plate and I've made a little plus sign and a little um, equal sign. In this video we're going to explore addition practically moving into the formal recording of those calculations and all using Lego and our whiteboards. Okay so Aaron we're going to start with some adding and you see what have I made mm -hmm. out of Lego? Plus equal. Mm -hmm. um, what I've also done is I've just chosen a selection of Lego bricks all with different little numbers of I don't know what you call them but we call them bumps in our house the little lego bumps on there so that actually Aaron has got a chance to choose different combinations of numbers so Aaron I'm going to ask you to choose two pieces of lego uh, to make our little calculation first of all can you choose two and stick them on so giving them a selection gives you a bit of more a bit more variety with your numbers rather than using all the same lego bricks what are you going to choose and you just choose one. So you're choosing the yellow one. Stick that on there, right? What about, what about this side? Um. Oh, okay, right. So how, Aaron has now made his calculation. So how many bumps do we have on here? Six. Plus. Four. Equals. Ten. Right, can you check? Can you count your bumps to see? One, so this is your practical three, four, side. Five, on this you've actually got the physical finding the numbers to make the calculation then you can actually have the practical idea of counting the bumps on there to see how many you have all together and as you can see now Aaron is sorting through to try and find a brick that actually gets him to his answer so what brick are you looking for Aaron? A 10. A 10. Bump. Right if you can't get a 10 could you get one maybe one two ones that um, add together the same as these and put them together what do you think? Could you do that? What do you think? So what did you have here? You had a six. Can you find another six? Six. Is that a six there? Yeah. And a six. And can you find a four? Six, four, 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 four. Six, four. Yeah. Does that make ten? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think mm -hmm. now that you could write down what you've made on there? Yeah. So now moving from that practical to then actually putting onto the whiteboard actually that formal recording. So what did you have first? Six. Yes. Plus. How many did you have on there? Four. And it's lovely to have this resource beside you so that the child can actually keep constantly referring back to it when they're actually writing their number sentence. Okay, good, excellent. Right, now I take these ones off. Do you think you could try a different one, Louie? What are you going to choose this time? Maybe. And thin one. A bridge? Oh my goodness. Okay, so you've made your number calculation. So again, we've got that practical. Now you're going to do your counting to see what you've got on here. So what is the calculation going to be? Three. Eight, do you think you nine. can write your calculation down straight away? So eight. Yes. Plus. Mm -hmm. Right, so you can count them all and check. One, two, three, four, five. Fourteen. Ooh, so can you write your answer? So you know what to help. So he is now able to transfer that calculation from the practical into the more formal written form. Okay, so now you have to make 14. How are you going to make 14, do you think? Let me check. Let me see now, do you think you could do something else? Instead of counting this all in ones, do you think you could count a different way? Yeah. What could you count in? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, two more. Mm 
are too many yes so again challenge your child so he keep pushing him that little one step further so yes he can count them ones but i know he can count them twos as well so it's showing them that idea of efficiency in maths as well and um, of using methods that are going to make them a little bit more efficient a little bit quicker at that problem solving so oh what are you doing are you measuring well, that's clever so now he has actually then taken that concept one step further and children amaze me like this He's taking the concept the idea that he knows that the blue one is 16, so he's measuring other ones up against it to see if he can get one that's um, just slightly smaller. Is that what you're doing? What are you trying to find? Um, one which is, which is at this size. Oh, that's a clever idea, isn't it? Oh, I found one of this. Okay. Now, this is a lovely teaching opportunity for you and your child Aaron so yeah this one goes to here look mm -hmm. and this one goes to here but uh oh there's a problem isn't there yeah so again pushing your child into that wee problem solving mode where they have to think a little bit more where they have to double check where they have to explain their thinking so you've told me this is the same but is it the same I I meant I really I needed at this size yeah but do you need something else? Are you missing some bumps? <laughs> How many are you missing? Oh, there instead. Does that work? Yeah. All right, we'll put it down and then you can count the bumps and double check. So allowing your child to actually solve that problem. Give them time to do it. Don't rush in and take over and say, oh, what about this one? Actually give them a chance to actually think. Sometimes children need just that wee bit longer. <clears throat> right, have you checked you've got 14 now? Yeah. Can you get them stuck on? Okay, check. Let me see you checking. Two, four, six. He's now eight, using what we talked ten, about to 12, be a bit 14. more efficient himself in the independently, which is great. Okay, lovely, good. So your calculation is great, right? One more, and then we're going to do some subtraction, okay? Um, Mama, yes. is it all right if, I, if the next time I'm going, I can do blocks instead? Yeah, you do whatever you want. <laughs> okay, what are you going to do? So, this. Yes. Which is eight. Okay. Plus. Which is what? Yeah. Twelve. Okay, so can you write your calculation down? So again, that constant going from the practical into the formal and really getting that idea of the correlation between them both. Oh, are you going to draw a picture this time? This time he actually wants to draw as a visual representation. And again, that's great. Encourage all those different ways of recording because that's what maths is really about. It's not just about sticking rigidly to the same thing. It's actually exploring those different ways. And if your child actually does prefer recording using the pictorial version, allow them to do it initially before you move into numbers. That is no problem at all. It's actually nice to see them trying different ways of recording. Okay, so... <clears throat> What's your answer going to be this time? I don't know. Right, so check your answer then. Eight. Not. Twenty. Twenty, okay. So how are you going to make twenty this time? So write down your answer. We well, you can't really draw your blocks yet, sure you can't, because you don't know which ones you're going to use. Mm, you have to look for them first. So again, though, he's approaching this calculation in a completely different way before he actually discovered the answer and went and found his blocks. This time he doesn't know what blocks he's going to use because he's drawn it in a pictorial representation. So we can actually draw them to find the answer, which is just a great way of showing that things can be done in different ways and different orders. And I love the fact that he's taken this concept of counting in twos and he's using it over and over again to make himself and his maths more efficient. Mm. Now careful, because how many do you need? 20? How many have you got on there? Um, 
yeah, ten. No, count that one again. Have we counted it before? Two, four, six, eight. Ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. Mm. Ah. So immediately he's made that connection. He knows he needs four. So you're not only addressing the idea of the calculation, but he's actually looking at different ways to make it with the Lego blocks as well, which is more than you can ask from this activity. The fact that they're actually looking at different ways to make the same number is just another skill that's being developed. So as I say, it's just an invaluable resource um, for doing these sorts of activities. I mean, if you want, you can actually encourage your child to choose exactly the same blocks and put them together. So if you want them to get an eight and you want them to get a 12, again, that's absolutely fine. It just depends on your child's level. But I know that Aaron would like this extra challenge of finding blocks to make it the, the same number in a different way. So it just depends on your child's ability and have a go. That's the only way you're going to get there is just have a go and take a risk. Okay, great, Aaron. Good. So did you get to 20 in the end? Okay, great.